everybody. Uh, I will now take you to southern Italy, uh, and I will be talking not about a mega site, but uh, in, in the terms of what we heard before. Um, it's a mega site in a, in a more rural uh, setting, I think. And this paper will be uh, a bit speculative because it's a new type of settlement um, that we found in Bronze Age Italy, and I found no parallels for it. So I want to present some scenarios for interpretation, and I also want to discuss um, how our interpretation of settlement is very much influenced by the way we do research um, of um, uh, small sites and uh, settlement dynamics. Um, so to give you the regional setting, um, we uh, investigated this area in Calabria, uh, southern Italy, the, the tip of the, the boot. Um, uh, the Contrada da Male is a part of our research area. It's an undulating sloping land uh, unit in the, uh, on, the, on the fringes of the coast of Sibari. Um, the whole area is about 200 hectares, so it fits very well in the mega sites that we saw before. Um, and we did there, um, my university did uh, non-site non focused uh, field walking surveys uh, um, between 2002 and 2004 uh, in a total area of uh, 52 hectares within this area. Uh, and then uh, this was followed by a more intensive uh, research uh, in which I did my doctorate. Uh, and we did resurveys of a couple of these sites. Uh, we did geophysical surveys, we did targeted corings uh, and some test trenches on, on selected sites within this area. Um, uh, uh, which comprise a total of nine hectares. Uh, and so we expanded the area a little bit. Um, unfortunately, we couldn't do any excavations. So what I'm gonna show you today is uh, all based on mostly non-invasive research. And that's why our interpretations are also quite uh, uh, unsure yet. Um, now, to show you the archeological evidence of what we found in the Contrada da Male, um, we found three types of sites. Uh, so we're talking about uh, proto-history, the Metal Ages. Um, we found uh, 44 uh, small scatters uh, with um, handmade uh, pottery and a specific type of storage vessel. And you can see it here on the large picture. It's in, it in Italian, it's called Dolio uh, Accordonio a Fascia, and it only occurs in the late Bronze Age. And we have five sites where these occur as well, but with a, a wider assemblage with more uh, artifact types. And so we call these rich uh, sites. And then there's 15 pottery scatters that are just uh, this handmade type of pottery, which is very poorly datable, poorly preserved. And so we, we're not very sure about the dating, um, but so they also occur here um, in this area. Now, the Late Bronze Age in Italy uh, is a, um, yeah, a period of between 1350 and 19, uh, 950 BC, and it's usually uh, subdivided into two uh, phases, the recent Bronze Age and the final Bronze Age, uh, to make it more complicated. Uh, but this is of, uh, of interest um, of our area, um, because we see a, a large um, increase in scatters uh, from the recent Bronze Age to the final Bronze Age. We go from three to 46 uh, scatters. And you have to remember <coughs> that these scatters are very small. They're sometimes only 10 meters in diameter, uh, sometimes a bit bigger. Uh, but so there are small artifact concentrations in this landscape. Um, but they're quite densely distributed. Uh, the average distance is about uh, 90 meters. Uh, our geophysics show that we uh, find a lot of similar features on, uh, on these sites. So we have rectangular uh, structures, uh, as you see here in the top and in the bottom. Uh, these are features that measure about eight by four meters, sometimes 10 by, uh, by a little bit more. Um, and they occur all throughout uh, the Contrada da Male, so in this whole area of 200 hectares, um, but in a dispersed way. Um, we find other stuff like uh, uh, ditches, uh, like this one, uh, and uh, s sort of uh, yeah, 
uh, ditches and, and pits. Uh, and so these occur uh, throughout this area. Um, these sites are all, yeah, they're small, they're sort of similar, and we don't see a lot of uh, variety between them in terms of function um, and, and dating also. Um, why is this so strange um, that we find this? Um, well, first of all, we find these very small scatters uh, and previously, previous research in our area has not really focused on these small sites. So research was always, always very much focused on central <coughs> places, the major sites. Um, so uh, the famous Italian archaeologist Renato Peroni did a lot of research in this area um, and he was specifically looking for the central sites uh, of this Bronze Age uh, society um, and his idea was to, to start building models of uh, state formation, chiefdom, the rise of elites and this was very much focused on how these elites uh, control their territories um, and to do so he modeled territories based on land unit size and on morphology of the locations where they are lo where they were found um, and so his model is very much based on on only a certain type of settlement that he was specifically looking for um, and in this model there's no place for uh, rural settlement and for uh, people who lived probably in farmsteads now the problem with his models of elite building and incipient uh, social complexity is that there's no mortuary record in this area. So we don't really have a confronting evidence for his ideas. Um, so the Contrada da Male doesn't really fit in these models, um, but we have to interpret it in a, in a certain way. Um, so we came up with the idea that we're dealing with a dispersed rural settlement. Um, it's, not, it's not a central site, uh, but we think that this area was settled by uh, single family farmsteads. Um, we also assumed that these people uh, live uh, and exploit their own lands as a, in a mixed agricultural subsistence system with crop cultivation and animal husbandry. Uh, we also think that they were permanently occupied, but as I said, we haven't done any excavations. So uh, it's only yeah, uh, speculation, a hypothesis. Uh, but we assume that they were uh, linked. They, they, there was a social cohesion. Because these sites are close to each other, uh, they're within a hailing range of 150 meters. So we assume that these people were neighbors and that they had a, uh, a community in which they exchanged goods, uh, marriage partners, animals. Um, but that this was a, a balanced, non-hierarchical uh, community, uh, a rural community. And we also assume that this is an, that the Contrada de Male is an entity uh, because it's a, um, it's a bounded uh, landscape unit um, and it's unique in our area. So beyond the Contrada de Male, we don't find this type of uh, site with these uh, storage vessels. Um, so I think here we found uh, the base of the, uh, the settlement pyramid. Uh, so the, the, the people at the, the bottom of the, uh, of the pyramid as, uh, in Kristaller's model. Um, and that uh, this is a, a contribution to uh, what we already know about uh, this area in Southern Italy. And here you see a picture of Broglio di Trebisaccio, which uh, Alessandro Vanzetti is working on. And uh, Toro Mordillo is another large site in this area. Now, um, we've done very uh, um, intensive research of this area. Uh, and our question is, um, is this area unique? Um, are, there, uh, are there other places like this? And we don't know, but we have no reason to believe that it is uh, unique, just because the research right now has not been focused on these very, very small um, artifact scatters. So I will now present to you three scenarios of how we can interpret uh, this, this uh, Contrada da Male um, agglomeration uh, settlement cluster. Uh, so it's very speculative, 
Uh, but I want to raise some issues that uh, we have to think about and maybe for our future research should address. So the first scenario is, yes, the Contrada da Male is unique. There's uh, um, no other, yeah, no other uh, uh, areas in, in, the, uh, in this area um, uh, with a similar uh, design. It's huge, it's much bigger than other uh, sites in this area, it's 200 hectares, much larger than any of the larger sites. It's much more densely settled. Uh, it doesn't have defensive features, but it's, it's naturally bounded. Um, what to make of this? Um, the second scenario is it's, uh, it's part of a wider process. Um, we just haven't found other places like this yet because we haven't been looking for them. Um, and so we're looking at a short-lived rural settlement in the territory of an existing center, um, but we don't know yet which center that would be. We have to research this further. Uh, and the third scenario is um, Contrada de Male is not unique. It's part of a wider process. We just haven't found similar places because we haven't been looking for them. Um, but it's not part of an existing territory of a one of these larger sites. It's something, something new, a new development in uh, the settlement dynamics of the Sibariti, the area, um, uh, having to do with an explosive population growth in this final phase of the Bronze Age, um, in which uh, people find new ways of settlement and um, being linked to a, a local market and, and trade networks. Um, now, uh, referring to what uh, we showed, what you showed this morning with the cycles of uh, settlement, I think what we should be looking at is um, Contrada da Male appears very sudden. It also disappears very sudden. The, the sites stop at the beginning of the Iron Age. Um, so I think maybe we have to do with a boom and bust cycle, uh, uh, population growth, um, and then a certain collapse, something happens at the start of the Iron Age, um, which we don't really understand yet. Um, but yeah, we have to start looking at that. Um, and we also have to start looking at um, the blank areas in our research area. Um, here you see the, uh, the coastal plain where sediments are so deep that we can't investigate. So we don't know, people maybe may have moved there at the start of the Iron Age. Uh, they may have moved further inland, but we just haven't been looking there. Um, and so, yeah, this is where I would like to end. Um, so there's still a lot of work to do, uh, but yeah, maybe we can talk about this later. Yep.